So, this is going to be a little different from the usual incantation review videos. This is just going to be a, a whole video just dedicated to a build. And that is the Arcane Faith Hybrid. It's a build that has pretty equal investment in both Faith and Arcane. And how to make that work, a little bit of advice for stat allocation, yada yada. You've seen a hundred of these, you kind of know how the deal works. This took a little bit of iteration to get to. I kind of struggled to pick out the weapons for a while. I kind of had to fiddle with them. You're probably going to be seeing footage of a few different Ashes of War that I tried out until I arrived at a setup that I liked. But I'm not going to waste your time. I'm just going to get straight into it because I also want to review a couple of invasions at the end and just like kind of explain my thought process while I'm playing and what's going on. Yada yada, you, you know the drill. Let's just get into it. So what you're seeing on screen right now are the stats that I ended up finishing with. 35 Vigor going up to 40 with the Source Seal. I mean, that's self-explanatory. Vigor is king, you all know that. 15 Mind for reasons that I will get into in just a moment. I didn't spend a single point on Endurance, I just have the base 10 that I started with and then I'm boosting it up with a bunch of Talismans because that's just what I wanted to use my Talisman slots for. I figured I'd save the points, spend them elsewhere. My armor isn't particularly heavy. I was originally using this Y-Hander, which was kind of dragging down my weight a lot and then once I stopped using this Y-Hander I had a lot of extra endurance to spend, so I'm probably actually slightly over what I need. But it doesn't really matter since I can't really adjust it, because it's all coming from talismans. Uh, strength 14 going to 19. Like I just said, I wanted to use this Y-Hander originally, so that's why I'm using Saw Seal to meet those requirements, as well as putting a few points into strength. I don't think I need as many points in strength as I have right now. With the Gargoyle Black Blade and the Volga Militia Saw that I ended up using, I think I could actually afford to take a few points over that, but that doesn't matter. Dex, 10 to 15, that's the same, that's just base amount. I didn't touch Intelligence because you, you could not pay me to split my build into all three spellcasting stats. That is an awful idea. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to do that later, aren't I? Uh, Faith. 23. 23 faith is enough to get access to our Keel's Flame, all the basic breaths to sort of get yourself started off with, and then 28 faith is enough to get access to Grail's Roar. I wasn't originally going to use Grail, but I figured it's I had a Talisman slot spare, I should stick on some extra faith, and once I had the extra faith, it was complete serendipity it just happened to line up so i kept it which i'm really pleased with arcane going from 22 to 30 there's not a lot of arcane stat requirements you have to meet when it comes to spells but you know it's an arc faith hybrid so obviously i wanted a good investment into arcane our uh, silver tier mask is <laughs> kind of busted i'm getting a full eight points off of that it lowers your physical damage slightly, but it is very slight. I think I was only losing like 20 points of AR on all my weapons and gaining like 40 spell buff from the communion seal. So absolutely worked out in my favor. Couldn't be happy with that. But yeah, let me just move on to the mind real quick. And here are the rough numbers that I worked out from my time playing, you need 12 mind minimum in order to get a full cast of Arkeel's Flame or Smarag's Gluntstone. If you have less mind than that, you just straight up cannot finish casting the spell. So I would recommend 12 mind as absolutely the bare minimum that you should bring if you're doing Arc Faith. The communion spells, the dragon breaths are kind of the big the big draw to doing Arc Faith. That's kind of what you're there for. 
you just instantly obliterate with a dragon breath at any soul level. I'm literally at soul level 60 one-shotting people and pumping out like 1000, 2000 damage with a full breath, like 300, 400 per tick I believe off the top of my head. I'm gonna have to check that in the footage and put a note if I'm wrong, but yeah, you get damage very quickly with Arc Faith. Uh, 15 mind is what you need in order to get full casts of Borealis and Exikes. They're both slightly more expensive than Arceal and Smarag, which is probably for the best. You know, Borealis is the best breath all around. And Exikes, I... You've seen Rot Breath, you know you know exactly why that should be more expensive. Uh, 15 mind also means that you have a few points of FP that you can spend and then still be able to get off a full cast of Arg Heal or Smarag. So you could do Catch Flame, Bestial Sling, any one of those really small spells. You can also do certain weapon arts. I know that I can do Seppuku and then get an Arc Heal. I can do Golden Land and then get an Arc Heal. I think, and don't quote me on this, but I think you have 15 points of FP you can spend before you don't have enough for a full cast anymore. And that's about it. Obviously, casting Arc Heal, Smarag, any breath will pretty much immediately empty out your FP bar because of how the drain works. I mentioned this in my video on the communion spells, but in case you didn't watch that, it makes you pay an initial cost to start breathing, and then it pays you, I mean you pay it FP for the next couple ticks, and then the same thing happens again for the second burst, but the second burst cannot stop. So if you drain your FP, your FP bar completely as you're starting the second burst, it will continue even though you've run out of FP. There's a bit of a grace period on it. And that's why I don't pump my mind very high, because I know I'm just going to run out as soon as I cast anyway. More levels into mind is basically just more spells you can cast before doing Arg Heal or something. You can obviously do a much higher mind investment if you'd like. If you want to play around with a couple casts of Grail, or Dragon Maw or something like that. I didn't because I was making a level 60 build so I didn't have a lot of points to spend. But if you're going higher, then I would consider mine to be something you'd want to invest in after hitting your soft caps in Faith and Arcane and getting all the armor you want and whatever. Mine is kind of like the final frontier for you. So moving on to talk about weapons real quick, the crux of the issue when you're making an Arc Faith build is that you can't get one weapon to scale with both Arcane and Faith. You could do an Erd Steel Dagger with a Cult, but that's bugged and it's kind of shit anyway. Uh, you could do a Ripple Halberd and then buff it with the Electric Damage buff or something, but that's very suboptimal, you would have to bring along a different talisman to buff with because for some reason FromSoft decided to make spell buffs completely dependent on your faith scaling so the communion seal is an awful choice for that and you'd be missing out on the main benefit of the ripple halberd to begin with. So basically don't fall into the trap that I did trying to make your scaling work. I thought maybe I could get some faith scaling and then somehow it would work, but it simply doesn't. You can see in the footage the damage is pitiful. It's simply not good enough for any weapon, let alone an ultra great sword. Golden Land was alright. I liked that weapon art. That was actually performing pretty well, but you know, you can't put a good weapon art on a bad weapon and make it work. So I was kind of back to the drawing board after this. And the first thing that I tried to look into was just getting a lot of flat damage instead. The Gargoyle's Black Blade is the weapon that I kind of settled on when it comes to just dealing raw damage. Gargoyle Black Blade is kinda mediocre when it comes to the scaling, but the raw damage actually pretty respectable. 
I was getting more damage with this great sword than I was getting from the Uggs, which means I've at least gotten an upgrade, you know? <laughs> uh, it's split into holy damage, which I'm not sure how good holy damage is in PvP, I just straight up don't know. On the one hand, I don't think there's a lot of armor that resists holy, but on the other hand, you get a lot of holy resistance if you level arcane, and lead builds are kind of all over the market, so you know, you're going to be dealing less damage against them, and that's your number one most hated opponent, so I don't know how strongly I can recommend holy damage. It's good though. It's not bad. It's just I don't know how good it is. The weapon art on Black Blade is very similar to the Blasphemous Blade. You raise it up, you slam it down, a little beam comes out forwards. Uh, the beam is much smaller than the one on Blasphemous Blade. It's much more difficult to land, it doesn't seem to have as much range, and the damage is kind of just okay. It's alright. You can chunk off like half of someone's health. You're not going to immediately kill them like you can with the Blasphemous Blade. But that's alright for this soul level. For some reason, the weapon art applies the Black Flame effect instead of Destin Death. I don't know if this was intentional or what's going on there under the hood, but it looks very strange. Uh, Black Flame doesn't give you a significant amount of damage. I believe I talked about that in my previous video, but you know, especially at low levels where dealing a percentage of someone's health is like 20 points because no one's leveling up their health that much yet. Uh, the spells are performing fine as always, you can see them here, but there's kind of something I haven't addressed with this setup, which is getting arcane scaling on your weapons, because you know, you might be looking at this build and thinking, well, why not just use a faith build? Why not just do some kind of tanky ass putting all your points into vigor and endurance build? What am I gaining from the arcane investment? And that's kind of the question that sent me back to the drawing board. Even though I really liked the Black Blade, I wanted to figure out a way to make use of occult and sacred. Eventually I did. Uh, spoiler alert, you just power stance. I don't know why I didn't think of that immediately. But yeah. I've also got a Cestus on the offhand. Cestus is just a really good backup weapon to have. I like to use it for parrying, but it's also very good to just equip it and chase someone down if they're playing passive, because you've got a better chance of roll catching them. You're very fast. You know, it's a good alternative to a great sword. Or an ultra great sword. I don't really use it as a main weapon, I just use it to harass someone, maybe get one or two bleed procs and then back off. I have a blood infused cestus instead of an occult studded cestus for virtually no reason. I am getting more bleed this way but I don't know which is better. I genuinely didn't have the studded cestus on this character and I couldn't remember where it was. So I kind of just left it. Uh, there are, of course, other options for your offhand. You could put a crossbow there. Crossbows don't benefit from any stats, really. So you can just kind of slap them on every build and they'll perform equally well. Especially at this low level. Especially since you can get, like, fucking sleep bolts and that stupid shit if you wanted to. Uh, you could also get a shield with something like carrion retaliation if you wanted to. That is a bit more of a weight investment. Uh, you could also do an offhand weapon. I personally didn't because I was going to move into power stance anyway. Alright, so let's hurry up and talk about the power stance thing that I've been alluding to for the past 15 minutes or whatever it is. So basically, I had two innate bleed weapons. I made one occult, put it in the offhand, gave it seppuku for obvious reasons, because you just buff that and leave it and you're in god mode for like a minute straight. And that one was handling the bleed, and then in the right hand, I had a sacred infused one, which was performing a little better on the damage than the occult one was, 
and it was kind of making up the slack in terms of just raw AR. So with the two of them combined, I'm getting a little bit of benefit from Arcane, I'm getting a little bit of benefit from Faith, I'm finally getting the best of both worlds. Now the first Dash of War I tried out on this was Sacred Ring of Light, and Sacred Ring of Light kinda isn't very good. Its range is very limited, and it takes a long time for the projectiles to actually come out. Because you gotta do the swing, and then the ring has to hover there in the air for a second before it actually starts tracking, and it's just so telegraphed, your opponent can dodge it very easily, which wouldn't matter if you weren't kind of locked in, but you can't really follow up off of them, from what I found. Usually your opponent sees the ring and backs off, and then if you're sprinting, you still aren't going to catch up in time to make use of the ring you've thrown out. So yeah, that was kind of thrown off the table pretty quick. Of course, there's other projectile ashes of war. They could do Beast Roar or Thunderbolt or something. In fact, I did actually try Thunderbolt a little, but I wanted to use a Sacred Ash specifically so that I could definitively say I was benefiting from Faith I could definitively say, look at these results, I'm getting them from Arc Faith. You know, if I put Beast Roar on it, or Thunderbolt, it begs the question, why not just do Dix Arcane? So that's why I kind of ended up going the direction I did. There's not many exceptional sacred Ashes of War, or Holy, whatever, whatever they're called. You know, the Faith Scaling Infusion. Uh, Black Flame Tornado is about the only one that I would consider to be like really good, genuinely a high tier Ash of War, and you have to kill the Godskin Duo to get that, and I was not going through all of that shit, I already had to go so far just to get Borealis Mist, I'm not, not killing the fucking Godskins just so I can test out a Flame Art Infusion. I don't think it would even one shot at this level, though I'm more than willing to be proven wrong. I don't think there's enough faith to really pump out the insane damage. But yeah, that's about that for that. So as I was saying, I went back to the drawing board and I thought about the Ash of War a little more, experimented with a few different things, and what I ended up settling on kind of surprised me. It was Sacred Blade, just the most bog-standard Ash of War I had ever imagined. It's very simple. You hold your weapon back, you swing it forward, and it shoots out a little holy projectile that does some respectable damage, honestly. I was hitting for like 500 with that. And then it buffs the weapon itself with a flat holy damage. I believe it is 80, 85. Yeah, it's, it's 85 holy damage for 20 seconds, which is a decent buff. It's nothing to write home about, but it's very helpful, especially at the lower level that I was doing this build at. I mean, not as low as level 30, but, you know, sort of in that mid-range before you go up to high. I'm getting off track. Anyway, the point is, at this level, 85 holy AR on a weapon that's already doing holy damage. That's respectable. I actually liked that quite a lot, and it ended up picking up some of the slack and damage. It gave me a nice projectile that I could whip out to punish Estus or just harass people that are running from me, trying to do a spell or whatever. Up until this point, I actually didn't have any sort of proper projectile on this build. I hadn't brought any fireballs or anything like that, which is probably my mistake, by the way. If you're running Arc Faith, you should bring uh, Flame Sling or Swarm of Flies, so you have that sort of mid-range option available. Maybe Frenzied Verse, but that's up to you whether or not you think you need to hit someone from that far away. Anyway, the point is, this kind of filled my needs. 
because I like to just sort of be running at people constantly. Sacred Blade was just a very quick, ah, oh, I think you're going to heal. I'm going to stop trying to roll catch you and swing this instead, and maybe I'll get more damage. Uh, the blood loss buildup was pretty insane. You know, Seppuku is kind of busted when it comes to blood loss. It gives you an insane amount of flat bleed, and then it scales off your arcane scaling, which is why an occult weapon with innate bleed gets such incredible high buildup. It's because Seppuku interacts with the arcane scaling that already exists on the weapon. I'm not complaining because it meant that I had the ability to bleed people out in a couple of power stance hits. I could have, of course, just done two arcane weapons with blood loss, but A, that's just a shitty dick move. I would actually like to play the video game instead of pressing L1. And two, Faith actually has something going for it. The damage was actually respectable, and I had a couple of duels where I couldn't get blood loss off for one reason or another. Either I didn't apply seppuku because I didn't have the time or the <laughs> motivation to put it on, or, you know, it ran out, or they cured it with a bolus or something, in which case I wasn't left stranded. The Faith picked up the slack, so I can actually say this setup has something going for it that Arcane or Faith on their own don't have, which pleasantly surprised me. So if you are doing your own build that is based around the Communion Seal, based around getting points into Arcane and Faith, consider doing a power stance like this. Obviously the weapon class is interchangeable, Curved swords are insane with the, what's it called, the scavenger sword with innate bleed. Obviously spears have innate bleed, which is kind of, kind of scummy, but it would be negligence of me to not say that. Uh, you could do larger weapon classes if you wanted to use golden land, but I don't know why you would want the power stance like an Uggs or a great hammer or something with bleed on the I don't think you can even get seppuku on a weapon that large now that I'm thinking about it so that would kind of be pointless but yeah anyway I'm getting off track do a power stance like this that is my only recommendation to you it means that you're getting the best of both worlds you're getting the high bleed build up from your arcane and you're getting respectable damage from your faith depending on the weapon of course I think I got lucky with the Volga Militia Saw being a decent AR weapon. I think it's kind of slipped on, actually. But yeah, you could consider the Erd Steel Dagger, but like I said, it's bugged, so this is probably your best bet. Even if they fix the Erd if it, if you're watching this like a few months down the line, and they've fixed the Erd Steel Dagger, and given it a few buffs, I still think the power stance would probably be a better option. Yeah, now that I've laid all of that on the table, I think I'm going to go into a couple of reviews of some interesting invasions and then close out the video. So starting out here in the Lakeside Cave, I honestly hadn't really invaded in here before, so I'm very lucky that the layout was as simple as it was. I've had a lot of invasions since Wix Dust got added, where I just have no idea where the fuck the host is. But there he is, he's right there, he's got a lantern on, he's nice and easy to find. He seems to want the bonfire jewel type of deal, so I go in for that. Uh, there's an Uggs crouch poke going on, so immediately, right away, I know I need to be very careful of my rolls and my trades. Speaking of trades, this guy thinks he can out-damage Dragonclaw, which is not true. 
If you see Dragon Claw, roll around it. It's very threatening. That shit just did 700 damage. <laughs> but yeah, I'm kind of struggling to get a hit on him here. I make the mistake of trying to trade. Almost get rolled for it by Giant Hunt, but that's alright. The weapon out there honestly wasn't a good move by me. I just kind of wanted to get footage of that. I bring out Catch Flame, try and get some quicker hits in. Maybe freak him out. I'm way too way too sick on getting the catch flame though and I'm wasting a lot of good opportunities trying to go for it. He's down to one hit, I just need to trade with him one last time and I think I'm gonna do it in a couple seconds from now, right here. Oh no, next one? Yeah, there we go. Uh, he was a pretty good opponent. He seemed to know what he was doing, he just got really unlucky with that Dragon Claw trade. He should not have gone for that and I think that was just straight up a knowledge check. <laughs> I don't think I would have won that if he hadn't walked straight into my Dragon Claw. Moving right along, we've got another 1v1. This time it's in Limgrave, just on the border. I did not know where this was when I first got here. I thought maybe he was in the mineshaft. It took me ages to actually figure out where I was in the world. I didn't recognize the landscape at all. Like I said, I think this is just another thing that we're going to have to get used to after Wex Dust. Am I complaining? Hell no, Wix Dust is literally the best thing that's ever happened to this game. But it does mean that there's a lot more unfamiliar terrain, which is interesting. I think I even pull out the map. Like I said, yeah, there it is. Yeah, I just did not know where I was. But it doesn't matter now. I've got them in my sights. There he is. Gonna wave hello. I stay very far back before I get into a fight. Because I always expect, like, a phantom with a great bow or frenzied burst or some shit to just instantly kill me. I- look, if you see a solo host, always be ready for some bullshit. That's just what I'm saying, especially out in the open world like this. I was scanning around for the phantom. I'm pretty sure the phantom is just dead. I reinvaded him after this and they bodied me. So I think- his friend just got killed or something, unfortunately. I'm walking up to him, saying hello. I'm looking around because I'm still very paranoid. I switched my weapons because I suspected some bullshittery. And I think it was a good choice because this guy's got power stance curved swords. I think he's another bleed build. I don't know, is my build a bleed? Yeah, my build's a bleed build. I was... <laughs> I was going to try to absolve myself of sin there, but I, I can't. <laughs> I've committed the cardinal crime, and I'm going to get crucified the moment I post this. But yeah, I'm waiting for him to make the first move, because I'm still very suspicious, and I don't mind waiting. But inside the fight, I hate waiting. Outside of the fight, I will wait all day long. He's gonna get a free hit on me because of it, but that doesn't matter. You know, he's probably pissed at me for standing around instead of fighting him, which honestly, I would be too. I don't blame him. So yeah, the fight's kind of starting for real now. I still have Sacred Bring a Light in this. I don't think I actually use it once, or I don't think I land it a single time in this fight. Yeah, he's, he's off to the races. He's going after me. We've started. I swing and somehow hit him from the side as we're passing, which is kind of one of the benefits of the Power Stance Halberd. My poise kicks in there. Always wear the heaviest armor you can, kids. You need poise in your life. Yeah, here I am trying to use the Sacred Ring of Light. It's just not going to land. Very disappointing. I do a jump attack. That's just kind of desperate. Uh, I probably could have killed him much earlier if I'd done the running R1 instead of mashing L1 all the time, that's on me. I kind of forgotten that I had a regular one-handed moveset at this point, I was just entranced by the power stance, and that's my bad. I learned eventually though. Moving right along into the next clip, we've got an actual 1v2 for once. It's in the Altus Plateau on the staircase, that's going to become important in a few seconds, I'm buffing already because there's a bleed build approaching me, which means the end times are on me. 
Uh, I've got the Black Blade here just because I like using it as my first weapon. I don't like to take out the Seppuku stuff unless I know that I'm going against some cringe shit. I probably should have used it here. Oh well. This guy is doing his best to join the US Air Force as a helicopter. He's doing nothing but jumping attacks. I should have free aimed Akil here. I get the memo eventually at the end and do catch him. You should free aim if you're trying to hit someone. This guy's build sucks. His, <laughs> his dragon fire just does nothing to me. Which is why you gotta invest in Arc Faith in the Communion Seal. Otherwise, dragon breaths are just meaningless. This guy, I don't think I'm gonna be able to kill him. Nah, he's just out of here. I got hit by a bloody slash from behind. I don't think I even saw the effects. So now I know I need to look at both of them. Uh, whatever, I poise through this because heavy armor moment and kill the host. I don't have enough for the weapon art. I just teabag him because he's running around with bloodhound step and a white mask. I mean, <laughs> it's the morally correct thing to do. But yeah, I'm dead now. Okay, here we've got some difficult terrain to manage. I believe this is up in the roots around Lindell. If the loading screen would just go away, I really should have cut this out. Yeah, yeah, I need to run over up those roots. Uh, this was going to be a freebie one. For some reason, one of the phantoms just killed themselves, just straight up couldn't do the platforming, which is fine by me. I'm not going to go down to that area where the gargoyle is. I'm going to stay up on the roots because the terrain down there looks very scary. It's a small enclosed corridor. Well, not enclosed, but difficult to get out of area where free people can just wail on me. This guy's already shooting at me before I've even come into his line of sight, so I know things are bad. I'm going to stay here because I know I can bunch them up. I can get the most use out of Grail or Argheel or something like that if they all come to me at once. Uh, this guy is pretty smart. He starts using the glintstone scraps. They don't do a lot of damage, but they do stagger me. They cover him as he's approaching, and they stop me from being able to get a dragon breath out. Uh, unfortunately, the good decisions will end once he actually reaches me. I have two seals in my hand. He should know that some real shit is about to happen. Yep, I do Grail's Roar. He doesn't get out of the way in time. He's reloading his crossbow, and he eats 700 damage. There is the phantom falling off. I didn't hit the phantom, by the way. They just did that on their own. He tries to trade with the Black Blade Weapon Art and dies for it, which just wasn't a good move. Like I said, the good decisions ended for him. I roll and fall off the side here, so I just quickly try to sprint to get back up. I'm a little indecisive about whether or not I'll arc heal, but I do, because I know he's going to miss here. And then I am free to just rain down on him. He has very little health, and he goes down very quickly. And that is the end of that. I just got lucky. I didn't earn this dab, but I'm going to take it anyway. <laughs> we accept charity in these parts. Okay, this is a good one. This is the first bonfire duelist in the entire franchise to make me smile. I actually liked this fight quite a lot. We're waving hello, getting the usual greetings out of the way. Don't worry, we get into this one pretty quick. I don't dick around here. Yeah, here we go. We're already in on it. They've got the dual wield Grave Scythe. They've actually got a fairly similar build. They've got like full arcane instead of going into faith. I try to do Dragon Claw and immediately eat shit because my high prime hasn't caught up. He's going on the aggressive, so I hit him to get him off of me. And here's another Dragon Claw coming out. I cancel it into Catch Flame to try and cover myself, but he doesn't want to go anywhere near it. He's not going to fall for it like this y handed guy. In fact, he knows because he's got his own Dragon Claw. <laughs> and he just whips it out the moment he sees me doing it. Actual legend behavior. I can't keep up the roll catches here. He gets out of the way. I try to switch and do some fancy Dragon Claw stuff in just a moment. Yeah, here it comes. I do Dragon Claw, and then I do Dragon Claw in my other hand to try and mix up the timing, and then I do Catch Flame. And he just stands back and buffs and throws projectiles at me because he's not stupid. Uh, I thought I would get a hit there, but I don't. They get out of the way just in time. We're kind of just left circling around now. He's got Raptors of the Mist, but I react to it. I, like, literally, I just straight up didn't know he had Raptors of the Mist. 
uh, it's very distinct animation. I know to get the hell out of the way. I don't think it's a great Ash of War, honestly. I tried to go for the parry there, but I messed up the timing. I do a couple of roll catches, and then I just need to find one more hit, which I believe comes right about... Is it now? No, it's next hit. Yeah, here it is. He's going for the running attack, so I just snuck him out. Uh, that was a very good fight. I actually liked that quite a lot. Uh, apologies for showing you so much. The Black Blade is just more exciting to watch than man bleeds people out with two halberds. <laughs> I don't know, if I get a bit of those, I'll try and post them. I like to call this one the Tale of the Four Clowns, because it's a long invasion and there are four clowns in it. <laughs> Very creative, I know. Anyway, this is obviously some AFK farm shit. I didn't realize at the start, but I know it now. Uh, I proved myself to be the first clown by immediately killing my own red with Borealis. <laughs> I don't know how that killed him and didn't kill the blue. He just got very lucky with the positioning, I guess. Anyway, I'm very sorry, Gura, Gura, whatever your name is. Uh, that was just a mistake on my part. I shouldn't have brought that out when I had a coal invader. I should have known better. But anyway, here's the second clown, this blue. I really should have switched to either the Cestus or the Halberds here. I don't know why I was so insistent on the Black Blade. I think I saw how much damage it did to him with the first hit and I thought, oh, okay, I'll just kill him super quick with a couple taps of this. I have to chase him for a while. It's a little annoying. He is an idiot, so he does a Dragon Breath directly in front of me. I interrupt him. Uh, if you're using the Dragon Breaths, please actually make some space for it. Uh, I get the Black Flame Ghost proc here and you can see it literally does 20 points of damage. It's not very good. Anyway, I kind of want to parry him here, so I'm keeping the Cestus out. He takes a trade here and just immediately eats shit. And I take the time to sort through my gestures like an old man with dementia until I find point down. And then we're on to the host. I wasn't sure how I was going to get through this gate at first. I know that Ballista can go through it, like a fog wall from DS3, or at least I think that's how that works, I don't actually know. I'm pretty sure you can get around it with the glitchy platforming with the Marika Hammer, Blade and Melania swap. I try to clip my dragon's head through the gate here, but it doesn't work like that. I am disappointed to find out. Anyway, here comes the third clown of the story, here's the blue immediately attacking me, but I, I try to get the message through to him, and it seems to sink in. I walk over, I show him, I'm like, hey, that's an AFK farmer. You know, maybe you should have a little more respect for yourself. And it seems to go through. They see he's inaccessible. I look for a projectile of some kind, and I still own this composite bow here. And I try shooting it through the top here, through the second hole, and it just can't quite reach. I'm just a little too short. You know, I'm only uh, two foot five tall, so that's too much for me. He tries to backstab me. Clown behavior. I get it through to him that I really don't want any of that. And for a time, it looks like it's stuck. I think, okay, maybe that's a one-off outburst. Maybe we can walk along the path of peace. I try shooting arrows through the top, but it seems to just get immediately snuffed out by the fog wall. So yeah, there's not a lot of hope here. I'm going to eventually switch to the arbalist, try and poke through right about, is it now, I believe? Come on, open your inventory. Come on, it's clearly not going through the holes. Just open your inventory, I swear to god. I'm gonna reach back in time and throttle you. Yeah, I look at the message. I can't take this, it's very accurate. The blue has gone comatose from lack of gameplay, and I don't blame them. I would too, if I was a blue. <laughs> I don't think I would be a blue, but you know, it's there. I fire off Narvalis and it hits. This clown cannot get a backstab on me. <laughs> I'm directly standing still. I try to teabag with him, but he doesn't take it. And then I just immediately kill him because he has 400 health. He's never leveled Vigor once. 
Uh, I feel a little bad for pointing down at him. I think he was just very new to the game. I think he picked it up like a week ago. He doesn't know what's going on. So, you know, he's not a bad guy. He's just like a dog. <laughs> a little puppy you'd find on the side of the road that isn't quite aware of what's going on. I shouldn't compare him to a dog. That's not nice. But anyway, I find out that I can shoot an arrow under here. And the rest is history. I have poison arrows. So yeah, we're going to watch this slowly play out. And that's about the end of the video. Thank you for watching. That's the final clown right there, by the way. The host. I mean, you probably already knew that, but I'm just going to point that out. So I've got all four noted down. But yeah, this video came out way longer than I was expecting it to. I, <laughs> I just had more to say than I realized, I guess. But yeah, I don't expect to do another one of these soon. It's just arcane faith hybrids didn't have a lot of resources out there, so I wanted to compile a little information and then talk about my own experience experimenting with the build and then round it off with a little bit of whatever the hell this gameplay section is. I don't know, I kind of wanted to do it, but I couldn't find another excuse, so I figured I'd talk about the build. And yeah. That is all there is to it. I will see you again whenever I upload. <laughs> I don't know. Don't don't expect them to keep coming as quickly as they are. I don't think that's going to keep up for very long. But yeah, I'll see you around later.